Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and we are continuing our series today on the 2021 external exams in Queensland for general mathematics and we are looking at paper two, question four. And it's a financial maths question. It also comes under the heading of sequences and I'll talk a bit more about why it falls under both headings later on in the video. Let's get straight into the question. It's worth six marks, so it's one of the big ticket questions on the whole paper. The graph shows two investment models. Model one is compounding annually, and we can see that on the graph. It's the one that has the curve. And model two increases linearly by $126 per year. Linearly is that straight line model of model two. Determine the difference between the two investment strategies in 2032, the nearest dollar. Now, this is a question that sort of could be um, examined in year 11 under unit one, when we look at simple interest and compound interest because this is what these two models are. Model one is a compound interest, we're told that in the question, it's compounding annually. And model two is straight line investment, which is simple interest. And so the amount of simple interest every year we're told is $126 per year. Now I guarantee you that word linearly probably confused a lot of students. And it's all about understanding that compound is that exponential growth in a curve and that straight line growth is simple interest. So I actually had a question like this as a complex unfamiliar question on my unit one exam at my school and it stumped a lot of year 11 students as well simply because they weren't sure what the question was asking of them. So let's have a little bit of a look and think about that. Let's go with Polly as problem solving model C, play and do check and start by identifying some key information. So first we've already mentioned that first piece of key information is that it's compounding annually. So we know we're going to need a compound interest formula of some kind. Second one, model two is linearly. And basically it's straight line growth, same amount of interest every year is simple interest. So that's our clues there. And we need to find the difference. So what we're going to need to do is look out to 2030, which isn't marked on the graph. We're going to have to work out somewhere where 2030 is and then work out how much model one is worth at that point, how much model two is worth at that point, and what is the difference between the two to the nearest dollar. Okay, so that's our key information. The question is, what do we do now? We need to plan. So let's have a look at our formula sheet in Queensland and have a think about what kind of formulas on here will help us. Well, if we have a look, it's not an annuity. There's no regular payment going into model one at all. So we can basically ignore the bottom few rows. And then we need to really only consider this top row, simple interest for model two, compound interest for model one. So once you've identified those formulas, it makes the rest of the problem a lot easier. So let's now think about model one, and we need to find the interest rate so that we can work out and project the actual value of that investment in 2030. We're given some information about model one by reading off the graph. We can see, first of all, uh, we're gonna be using this formula and looking at the variables in that, if we look there on where the curve starts, it starts at the um, principal amount in the year zero of $250. So we could start that as our principal at the beginning of the investment. Our next thing we could look at is if we go all the way out to 2038, we can see that the value of the investment of the investment model one is now 2750. So that's our amount at the end of that um, 18 year period. So we've got a little bit of information we also know that, that across those 18 years, the value of N will be 18 because it's only compounded once per year. So the missing variable is the interest rate. We can actually work that out. It's only one variable that's missing. So let's substitute that information straight into the formula. And then we're going to rearrange or transpose that formula. So we're going to divide both sides by 250. And once we've substituted into that formula correctly, the QCAA awarded a mark for correctly substituting the values into a geometric rule. So you could have also used a sequences rule here. And if you look at the marking scheme on the QCAA's website, their focus for this question is actually arithmetic and geometric sequences. Now, when I saw this question, I thought differently. I thought investments and loans, and that's why I went straight for um, the compound interest formula and the simple interest formula. And that's okay, because they are geometric rules and arithmetic rules. So you remember when you covered sequences in class back in unit three, you would have talked about in simple interest and compound interest in the compact, um, context of situations involving sequences. 
So you could have either approached the question in different ways, but I guarantee you most students probably went the same way I did and focused on interest formulas, because that's the last thing you do when you're in year 12, is you focus on investments and loans. So because we've determined a geometric model, so if you'd actually treated model one like a simple interest situation, then you wouldn't have been awarded the second mark. Um, so you would have possibly lost two marks there because it required you to use a geometric rule. Notice that first dot point is about the correct substitution. It's also about putting the right values into that formula as well. So recognising that the principal is 250, recognising that the amount at the end is 2750 and that the number of years is 18. So it's all about the right substitution for that first mark that's awarded. Second mark is about picking the right kind of rule. Let's keep going. Dividing both sides by 250. And then we're going to take the 18th root of 11, because 2750 divided by 250 is 11. And we're going to get um, this answer here after we take one away. And we need to change that into an interest rate. That's 14.25% rounded to two decimal places. So now we've found an interest rate for model one. Now what we can do is use that interest rate, the original principle, and we can work out using the simple interest formula, the amount at the end of 2030. Okay, so we're going to now do that, find the value in 2030. So let's substitute that in there now. So we've got 0.1425 going in. It's now a power of 10 because there's 10 years from 2020 to 2030. And we work out that our amount at the end is $947.33. So we've now found the value of the investment in 2030 for Model 1. Okay, now we need to do something with Model 2. So we actually know that the interest rate is, a, the interest that's paid is $126 per year. And this particular investment is starting at zero, that's the principal. So if you try and use the simple interest formula here, you'll notice that if you start with a value of zero, you're gonna be basically timesing um, the N and the I value by zero. You're gonna get nothing as an amount at the end. So that's not gonna make a lot of sense. So we're not gonna use the simple interest formula. We're gonna just jump in and recognise that we're getting $126 of interest every single year. It's increasing linearly by that amount. And we know it's going to increase by that amount for 10 years. So what we're going to do is we recognise that the amount at the end is going to be the principal, which is zero, plus the interest. So you remember this formula? It's one you had to memorise. So it's going to be interest of $126 a year times 10 years. And that will be our first, our third mark for the paper, first mark for this section because we've identified an arithmetic model. Now, if you'd used the other way of doing it through sequences, you would have been using an arithmetic model using term one um, plus the common difference, etc. But this case here, we're just focusing on A equals P plus I. And that comes to $1,260. So now we've got an amount for model two. And that was our fourth mark coming up with an amount for both models. So if you missed one of the models, you didn't get the mark at all, and there's no half marks on these papers, so you needed to come up with an amount. Now notice it doesn't let's say correctly determines an amount. So if you picked the wrong model earlier on, uh, or incorrectly substituted and made a mistake, you still could have got a mark here, um, as long as you come up with, a, with an amount for both models. Now the next step is to find the difference. That's the main part the question's asking of us um, to get our final answer. So we're going to, the difference means subtract. And the answer also tells us to do it to the nearest dollar. Always check to see the rounding that's required. A lot of us are drummed in with money that it needs two decimal places, but sometimes we need to round to a different amount. So always check. Okay, so the difference will be model two, take away model one, which is 1260, take away $947, which gives us $312.67. So we need to find the difference to the nearest dollar around and round that up to $313. And that is our fifth mark, determining the difference to the nearest dollar. Now you might be wondering, what about a sixth mark? Isn't it finished? Yes, it is. But the QCAA also awarded a sixth mark for logical organisation, commuting, communicating key steps. So it's important that when you're doing a question like this on your complex paper, that you are communicating your steps so that you separate models one work and you actually label it model one and then model two's work and label it model two. Things like dollar signs are a, a logical organisation set, um, rounding correctly, that sort of thing. Okay, now this is a question I'm sure a lot of you are asking. Couldn't you just read it off the graph? Yes, you could, but 
you'd need to be doing that with great precision and assuming the graph is to scale. That's a big assumption. It doesn't tell us if it's to scale or not. So you're making that assumption. So um, if, it, if it was to scale, I guess you could annotate on the graph underneath where all the different years are, measure all of the different spaces in between. That would be a possibility for you to do as well. You would need to show very clear annotations of your work in here that you are reading off the graph. So for example, where that um, 2030 is, you'd have to be measuring out the years at the bottom, find 2030, mark it up to the line where the graph is, and then out to the amount, and then very clearly measuring up the amount on the y-axis as well to get answers. So that's a lot of work, and a lot of students don't do that particularly well. That's why it's better to use formulas. Also, you'll notice in the marking scheme, there were two or three marks there for using a geometrical arithmetic model. Um, so if you've just jumped into reading up the graph, you've thrown away potentially half the marks straight away because the marking scheme does not allow for you to read off the graph. Well, I hope you found this helpful today. And if you did, why not tell us in the comments, like and subscribe to the channel, hit that notifications button so you know when the next video is available. And why not tell a friend I'm sure they would have liked to have known how to do this question. You could even share it with your teacher so that your teachers are aware of the channel. And if you've got any questions about anything you saw in the video today, why not contact me at mcclutchymaths at yahoo.com. There's no AU on that one, just .com. Or easier even still, join us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram. That way you can stay in touch with news and competitions as well. Well, you've been watching McClutchy Maths and I'm Natalie McClutchy. I'm so grateful that you have joined us today. Thank you and have a wonderful day.